Hey, howdy, hey guys, it's me here, your nerdy mama, coming at you today with our daily Bible reading. Today we begin week two. Uh, just for a recap, uh, each day we read a section of the Bible. Um, it's divided into seven sections, the epistles, the law, history, psalms, poetry, prophecy, prophecy, and gospels. And then we start the week over, this is week two, and we begin again with the epistles. This will be Romans chapters three and four. This is going to be out of the New King James Version. This is Romans chapter three. What advantage then has the Jew, or what is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Would their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. But if our righteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unjust who inflicts wrath? I speak as a man. Certainly not. For then how will God judge the world? For if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil that good may come, as we are slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, their condemnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they all that they are all under sin, as it is written. There is none righteousness, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is no none who seeks who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an empty tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness? Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law. And every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propination by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness, because in His forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Is it, ex it is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law, or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since there, since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. And the father of circumcision to those who are not only are of the circumcision, but also who walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised.
For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings forth wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he, whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who, contrary to hope, and hope believed, so that he become the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was also about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also also able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness now it is not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification again that was Romans chapters 3 and 4 in the New King James Version of the Bible I will now read the Lord's Prayer our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope that these words from the Bible tonight have touched your heart. I hope everyone is staying healthy, happy, and safe. Bye-bye, friends.